Hello from Bangalore, my name is Ivana and today we're finally doing another Q&A. That rhymes, I'm such a rapper. Anyways, <laughs> I haven't done a Q&A video in so long. I prefer also to do live Q&A videos. I just didn't have the time recently. When I come back to Bangalore, so when you're watching this, I am somewhere else. When I come back, I will try to do a live Q&A video because I love chatting with you guys and you guys are so much fun. But for now, I just ask you guys to, to ask me anything on Instagram and we had over 70 questions. So I just picked some of them for the sake of the length of this video. And let's answer some cues, my friends. Simran underscore mixer for life asks, what was the biggest challenge for you when you came to India for the first time? And how did you manage with the local public in here? You know what was my biggest challenge? Accepting what the media told me about India is not true. Nothing is true. They tell you all lies. Indian people are the sweetest people in the world. No, you will not get raped. The food is absolutely amazing. If you're a little bit careful, no, you will not get sick. So it took me a while to get out of that brainwashing. Also, one of the biggest challenges, leaving India. I shit you not. So, yep, that was my biggest challenge. Archie Sakura, you say you always do what feels right to your heart. How many times do you have to do what you don't want to do or doesn't feel right to you? And how do you deal with those situations? Let me tell you this. There will always be like a part of your work that you don't like. So for instance, when I worked in PR, I hated administration. Right now, I still hate administration. And on press trips, because your schedule is so jam-packed, there are definitely going to be some activities that are not relevant for you, but that are relevant for the other, you know, group members. Traveling in India, I definitely do also feel a pressure to visit the places where you guys are inviting me because I love you guys so much. You're like a family to me. You made it possible to do what I do today. So obviously I want to visit all of your cities and I want to meet you guys. And for me, it's honestly heartbreaking that I don't have the time or the energy to visit everywhere at once. It just all requires planning. So yeah, for instance, canceling Northeast, a lot of people didn't understand why I was crying. I was crying because I was disappointing you because so many people wanted me to go Northeast. And then I was like, yeah, I'm not strong enough to do this. And it broke my heart. So yeah, I have definitely made a decision for this year to, you know, do what's right for me even though sometimes I don't like doing what's right for me. Oh gosh, I am just rambling on and on about this. It's such a dilemma. I love what I do, but at the same time, I am only human. I get tired. Exhausted is a better explanation even, and then I just need to call it quits, even though I don't want to. I hope you got your answer, <laughs> kind of. Miro asks, what are your travel plans for the upcoming year? So I'm gonna stay in India for quite a long time this time around. I still have a visa until June, but I have to leave the country after 90 consecutive days. And in terms of planning, obviously I have some travel goals. I would love to travel to the Philippines this year, Sri Lanka, maybe Indonesia, beach destinations. If you watched my uh, 2018 resolutions videos, beach destinations is something that my heart craves for. But at the same time, I feel like 2018 should be the year of Chaltahe. And that's an Indian expression to say, what will come, will come. Do as little planning as possible because honestly, that's how I like my travels the most. And I need to bring that back in 2018. Mayur Kiran. So this is a big thing and it's been asked quite a lot. So that's why I wanted to add this question. What made you stop sharing your locations? Why you're not making a meetup in Bangalore? You guys, like I said, are like my family. And obviously my brother and all my friends and my parents would would also react like you guys are reacting. Like, what happened? Like, did, did, did anybody hurt you or whatever? People were asking things about my lip. And I'm just like, nothing happened. But more than ever, I am just aware how vulnerable you are as a solo female traveler. Let's just say I started listening to you guys a lot more because you always want me to feel safe and 
obviously you would want this for your mother, sisters, uh, cousins who were traveling alone as well, right? I am just staying on the safe side of things because we don't want anything to happen, right? Let's just not go there. That's it. Nothing happened, for real. I'm just more conscious about safety, more than ever, actually. Maxine asks, are there any Dutch things or dishes that you miss while you're traveling? Cheese, obviously. Uh, fries, potatje oorlog. Uh, I love that stuff. Neha Rati asks, oh, this was actually a little bit of a funny question. Hi, Neha. What's your purpose coming to India this year? I know you were pursuing yoga earlier. Oh, honey, I was always pursuing the food and the good weather. That's always my reason to come back to India. And also the wonderful people. I love Indian people. I love Indian culture. I love Bollywood. Ugh, I can go on and on and on. Let's, let's just combine it into this answer. My heart is at peace when I'm in India. When I'm in India, I don't feel that need that a lot of travelers feel or most travelers feel or all travelers feel to go somewhere else. When I'm in India, I just feel like, yep, I'm home. This is it. Oh, this is such a sweet question. Arun Kumar 94 asks me, what makes you happy? What makes me happy? One, enough sleep, yoga, good food, and amazing people around me. Obviously, I think I also need travel, but having done that so much for the past two and a half years, honestly, it makes you realize what the basics are that make you happy and it's those four things. Sahana KP asks, what are the three most important things that keep bringing you back to India? No, don't say paneer. Actually, I have made two videos with six reasons in total why I love India. If you would like to know that, check the FAQ down in the description below. And the three most important things, yeah, it's like in the first video, so I think you can watch that one. <laughs> Marcist asks, in terms of affordability, how would you compare India to some of other countries you visited? Do you find it easier to stretch a euro a long way here? Actually, I think India is literally the cheapest country in the world where you can travel. You can travel on $20 a day. It is not something I do or I have ever done, actually, because one, safety it has always been a concern of mine anywhere in the world so i'd rather pay more to stay in a safe place than you know go for like the cheapest place and then don't feel safe but for instance street food is hella cheap you can get like a, i don't know dosa in kochi is like 40 rupees which is a little over 50 cents obviously it's going to be more expensive in the big cities mumbai is the most expensive city in india Delhi is not that expensive, I have to say. Bangalore is also quite okay. So yeah, India is definitely like one of the cheapest countries to travel in the world. Himanshu.kulsh.3 asks, and this was also a funny question, so that's why I wanted to include it. Why do you want to settle in India after knowing of all this violence and cheap level politics by every political pun uh, party in our country? So a little bit of a troll answer would be Paneer. Do you need any other reason? <laughs> A kind of kind of serious answer to your question would be, honey, politics in every country ever. Please don't think that just India. If your question is not included, join me uh, soon for a live Q and A. Don't forget to subscribe to get that notification. And if you like this video, put a thumbs up. Thank you guys for asking me all the questions, and thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.